Well, good morning, everyone. It's um, 6.30 a.m. local time here. Just came through Walcott, Iowa, which is where the Iowa 80 truck stop is. Unfortunately, not gonna get to stop this morning. It was dark. Uh, I would like to stop on my way back through. I wanna get the camera out and uh, just search the lot for some uh, for some large cars. See if we can't get some good pictures or uh, even chat with a few people. The place was popping when I went by, that's for sure. Uh, but we have about another uh, about another two hours to our destination in Marshalltown, Iowa. to get into my truck none of those parking spots were taken the lady just really rubbed me the wrong way because I don't I don't know if I explained this I might have come off as I don't know being a little over the top or whatever but it took me about 10 minutes to maneuver myself around that parking lot to get into that spot and as I was coming into the parking lot she walked out I saw her and then I like kind of like glanced over like I didn't know if she worked there or she thought I was gonna hit her car or what but 10 minutes later after I maneuvered into that safe spot then she came out and told me I needed to move so none of those spots were taken my truck was fine this morning so it is what it is all right I'm gonna throw up a quick poll which I will explain later. Who thinks their job is more important? A sales manager at a car dealership or a volunteer firefighter? Let me know down in the comments below and I will definitely tell you a good story. Well, welcome to small town Iowa. Here at our delivery should be up here on our right. Yep, right off this dirt road. Perfect. Well, delivery done on the two tractors in the car. Now we're just flying down a dirt road. I feel like there's quite a few country songs about that. Well, I just figured out why it's been so windy lately. Someone's got all these giant fans turned on, causing it to be windy. Wish they would just turn them off so it wasn't blowing all over the road. <sighs> the audacity. And I really enjoy Iowa. I enjoy traveling. I enjoy my job. You get to see stuff like this. Like, look at the size of these grain bins. Iowa Co-op. It's just unbelievable. Well, the nice person award today goes to us. Actually, he's a finance manager. Wasn't a sales manager, so it doesn't count. Picking up this 2017 Ranger. I gotta pull it out here so I can take my pictures this is a metrogistics or a certus car 65 grand 32,000 miles yeah so the guy gave me his card and was like if it's blocked in well hold on. he first tried to come get it for me and I was like I'll go get it like it's not a big deal just tell me where it is 
So he gave me his card and was like, if you're blocked in, just give me a call and I'll run over there and uh, move whatever, whatever might be in your way. So let's go get this thing loaded up. We got this one to pick up and then we have uh, uh, like a family moving from Illinois to Maryland. So we're transporting two of their cars. So there we are. We'll just toss this on the back because this is going to go back on the back once we get the other two cars. What are these things? 3.0 turbo six cylinder diesels. Huh. I honestly didn't know they still or they still made these in diesel, but that's pretty cool. Let's get it loaded up. Oh nice little residential load. Just parked off the side of the street here. Picked up this Camry. Sorry, it was probably windy. This Camry. CX5. That's the Range Rover from earlier. They kind of threw a wrench in the plans, but we'll talk about that once we get stopped here. It's just a little wrench, it's no big deal. Um, I'm just gonna have to maneuver some things around. And that happens when you do these residential transfers, should I say, customers moving and they can only drive 70 cars, you know what I mean? They, this, these people have three cars. His wife's flying and he's driving and they told him it would take four to five days for the cars to get there so they don't even get there till two days two like two and a half days from now so kind of throws a wrench in the plans but the delivery is only like 45 minutes from my house so if i have to drop them off at my house and wait till they get there i can do that but not really what i wanted to do you know what i mean it's all right that means since we don't we were gonna drop tomorrow because we're like 11 hours away now and i am i've got i've got an hour and a half left of drive time so i was gonna try to run that out so nine and a half tomorrow you know i could have had these off my back tomorrow but i don't think that's gonna happen now and uh the range rover that's a that's a um that delivers to a dealer hmm i might have a plan i gotta think about it but just things like that uh, the broker doesn't kind of communicate that to you and uh you know it's only 500 and 550 miles or so why would it take four or five days i just don't understand that so Let's, uh, we're gonna find a place to sleep tonight, get on here and find, uh, find, a, find us a hotel, and uh, we're not in a hurry now, so let's go find some uh, hotel and some dinner. All right, so I'm gonna finish this video with my, why I made my comment earlier about sales managers or um, volunteer fire department or volunteer firefighters so I was at the scene of an accident on it was last Friday um, I'm gonna try to pull up the pictures here to remind me exactly what happened I'll put them up in the video so long story short this kid rear-ended uh, somebody that started like a four-car accident because he was texting and driving so kid texting and driving is number one car he hits first is number two and three and four are the cars that uh that get caught up in it so he rear ends this car pushes them into these two they go this way so he, which I'll put it, like I said, I'll put a picture up. His car was the worst. So I run over to him and um, I look through the windshield first with all the doors closed because I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. I didn't see the whole accident. I just saw like that last second, like 
or that second right after he hit and then everything like dispersing from that. So I looked through the windshield kind of to like to see what I was getting myself into because I really don't do well with like blood and gore and whatever. Um, so I look in and he's like, he's moving. So I open the door and I ask him if he's okay. Just had the wind knocked out of him from the airbag. So the car had uh, coolant and tranny fluid puking everywhere. So I open the door. I'm like, are you good to move? Like feel yourself? Like, are you okay? And he said, yeah, I just need to get out of here. I can't breathe because of all the um, airbag dust or smoke. And I, uh, so I pulled the door open because it crinkled the fender back on the door. So I had to rip the door open. So I got him out because I didn't want that car to catch on fire with all that stuff, you know, spilling on a hot engine. So anyways, I get him out of the car and my truck is, I'm right here. I'm like parked right here. So there's a bunch of people like running around. Well, this is like the busy road in, the, in my town. There's two roads like both lead into the into the town and both lead out. But this is where they come together at, you know, at a, at a red light. So like we're trying to turn people around. Well, here comes Mr. Mr. Volunteer Fire Department guy, volunteer fire fighter. He parks his Harley over here with his handlebar mustache, runs up tries to see what's going on and uh there's a truck right here i'm gonna try to draw a heart because that's gonna mean something they get this car moved out of the way they get these moved out of the way and i run up to this guy and i said hey do you mind turning around there's a connecting road over here he goes i have time sensitive stuff for the hospital i have to get to the hospital it was like a medical truck with a reefer like a small like carrier reefer unit on it so like had blood or organs or who knows what in it medicine who knows so i said just uh just creep through here slow watch for people because we can be people everywhere and this is when it happens the guy yells at me the volunteer fire department asking me what the f i'm doing letting this guy through i said dude i'm just a bystander i don't like i got out to make sure everybody's okay everybody's okay i'm getting that out of here before you think you're gonna yell at me so that's my story he must have thought he was Billy Badass and, uh, you know, wanted to control the scene. Well, whatever. I was just an innocent bystander. I'll see you guys tomorrow.